What up? So, got some stuff from Amazon, which I don't even remember ordering. Actually, I think I do, but I'm one of those that puts stuff in the cart and leaves it there and leaves it there. But there are issues. Come on. It looks like it was almost open. And this one, no open, nothing. There's nothing in it. All there is is I can see a little itty bitty card right there. There's nothing I can feel in there. We'll find out. So. What's in the Amazon box that's already half opened? If I remember correctly. There's only a couple things I really care about. The razor blades. Try this. Love this little one. I have a big one. And I use work. Or around the house. This little one is really nice. I actually like these. The problem is you can't get the blades anymore. You used to be able to go to Lowe's or Sears and get them. No, you can't. Okay, then. A hot glue gun. I have a very old one. The problem is it's a very old one. It takes, like, forever to heat up, and it's just big and bulky, and kind of obnoxious and this one was on sale and the thing about it was and this is actually the only reason I bought it is I needed glue stick for my old one and this one with glue stick was the same price as the old just glue sticks for the old one <laughs> so it was like why not buy a new one So it's tinier, much tinier. It's got a much finer point. It uses much smaller glue sticks. The other one's much bigger. It looks exactly the same, other than everything about it is bigger. Basic everyday glue gun. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. I kind of like it better than the old one. I was kind of debating on getting it. Because you do get more. I, th I think I get like 15 glue sticks and uh what's up 3d medic um you get like holy crap you guys can be able to hear me now that i think about it now that i have the mic way over here um you got more glue sticks with the other one but like i said it was old and it's huge it's just ridiculously huge I mean, the nozzle's big it was just a pain in the butt so i ordered another one it was like seven plus We'll see if it actually works. I wasted my money. The next thing, these knife blades. I really want to get out right now. This old knife blade is so dull I can't even cut the plastic to get it to new ones. I need these wrappers so you just certainly can't get to it. Like I said, I love this little knife for just doing like hobby stuff. I mean, I have, you know, exacto knife style. But honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time I reach for this. I love this little thing. Like I said, it's hard to get blades for it now. I can't even see if that old one is dull on the other side or not. I think it is. Let's flip it over and find out. It's still got a point on it where this side doesn't, so maybe I'll keep it that way. But now I have, I believe there's 10, yeah, 10 pack. So I have those. And last but not least, I ordered these because 
I'm going to find out something. All I really want was one. But one of these was, was only like a dollar less than five of them. <laughs> so, and what this is, is the old classic. Oh, and it comes with a little screwdriver too. That's pretty cool. There's a baby screwdriver. Um, these are the old classic. Which ones are they? I don't remember which ones I ordered. doesn't even say what model they are. I know what they are. They're 5908s or they're the, the basic ones. And the thing about it is, is I have the 2208s, EMC 2208 or 2108 or whatever they are on Front King, which is running right now. That baby. And I'm still getting extruder motor skip now and then so I'm hoping that these will actually supposedly have more power even though they're less silent extruder motor who cares and like I said five of them was only like a dollar more than the one so I may take the one I need and turn around and sell the rest. <laughs> Put them on eBay. Because I've actually got, um, I got five with that, and all it needs is four. So, in reality, I can almost build another one. Because the Zs really don't need it either. I don't need the 2208s. So if I put one of these in the extruder... And one of these in the Z, and then take those two, the one out of the Z and the one out of the extruder, plus the one that's left over, I can build another whole printer board and have the same setup. I could take two of these for the Z and the extruder and have the three other ones for X and Y. When all I need is two, really. I can pull the extruder out. That's all I really need to do. I can leave the Z's. I just have the two. Or double up, depending on what board I get. I could double up the Z. Or whatever. But there you go. Stepper driver. Now, what's in this uh, empty envelope? I think I know what it's supposed to be, but there's nothing in there. It's empty. There's a little card right here. Let's open her up and find out. We always make these tear at spots impossible to tear at. <laughs> There's a little envelope in there. Aha, I remember what that is now. That is. This was on sale. It's the only reason why I bought it. It was like three bucks off. It was only twelve bucks. Focus on it. That is a micro Swiss coated. Well, it's still a brass nozzle with a I call it chrome coating. But look at that hole. It's a point eight. Sweetness. Which will be going. What's up, Rover? Um, it will be going on this. That puppy right there. Right now I have a point one of those cheapos. I don't know if you saw, I ordered some super cheapo. Like a 10 pack, 20 pack of nozzles with a variety of sizes. It was eight bucks, I think it was. And it came with two 1.0s, big, 2.8s, 2.6s, 2.5s, 2.4s, 2.3s, and 2.2s. 
And now the issue is the point fives and the point twos are the wrong nozzles. They're MK8 style nozzles, which wouldn't have made a difference. Those I can make function because I have different heat breaks. Now, really, the only difference between an MK8 nozzle and, a, and an E3D nozzle is the length of the threaded tube. I mean, the bolt is a little different and everything, but the biggest issue is the length of the threaded tube is longer on the E3Ds and shorter on the MK8s. So I prefer, even on the MK8, I prefer the E3D because it's more thread, which means your PTF tube comes down and butts into it, and there's more material, more of the nozzle in the heat break, less of, or in the heat, heater block, less of the heat break in the heater block, less PTF heat tube, so you end up with a slightly longer hot zone. That makes sense. Um, the MK8 uses a much shorter nozzle, so I almost, even on MK8, I often use a E3D nozzle. Just lifts your heat break up, which is fine. You end up with more of the heat break tube sticking out of the top of the heat block with the actual heat break notch a little higher, which can be an issue if you do a lot of traction, but especially on the uh, on the uh, Max Micron, I don't do that much retraction anyway, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. On this, it might, I haven't experimented with that on the uh, Frown King, because that is a Bowden. So my retraction is like three, which is still pretty low. And that's, a, it actually used to be four. I just did linear advance on it. So it, uh, it uses less retraction now because I did the linear advanced setting, or so far it seems to need less retraction. But yeah, actually, I don't know if you guys saw this. This is a little pack of nozzles you get for eight bucks. The only one that's not is that's my uh, tool steel one that came off of this. When I put the 1.0 on there. Because I did put the 1.0 on there. We'll go over that in a minute. But. And yes, my background is very bright. Because the sun is shining ridiculously awesome. And I am not closing my windows up to increase the video quality. Because it's just too awesome having sunshine. <laughs> so you're over it. <laughs> Deal with the white background. It ain't hurting you any. Um. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the point two. Not only is it an MK8, but it's a three millimeter. Where this is what it's supposed to be. It's got the E3D like bolt nozzle instead of the MK8 bullet nozzle tip. But it's also, and they're both 0.6, but they're, this is a 1.75, that's a 3.0. That's made for 3.0. And there's four of them like that in here. There's the 0.2s, the 0.5s. I don't know if you can read that, but it says 0.5 on there. Would it focus that close? Yep. Yeah. that, huh? 0.5. And the point two, which is very tiny. I actually wanted to play with that. Come on. I know you can do it. I just did it a second ago. There we go. Point two. But it is also a three millimeter hole. But for seven bucks, it's not going to deal with having to ship them back. I really did. I don't care about the point fives at all. The point two, I kind of wanted to play with, just because I had them. But it's not a deal breaker for me. I mean, they were seven bucks. And we have my tool steel point six. Can't even see because it's all black. 
this is a really nice mouse I've been using this a while and I only took it off because I wanted to try the point zero, one point zero. Which I've been doing, and it's kind of cool. And I don't know if you saw my posts. I kept posting up mid prints with the 1.0, but then never posting the finish because it's doing weird crap. Look at that. It's like a perfect pattern. It gets worse at the top. And it's funky. Look, there's a bunny. And it's not... See how the bunny's, like, almost normal? I mean, there's issues with it right here and stuff. But that, I think, is from the corner, not the print. Not, not the imprint. So, I, I, I don't know why. This was, this was actually one of the last ones I did. This is with Kira, which is actually the worst one. And I went through all the settings, and I can't figure out what the hell is wrong. This is actually the first one, which is a totally different scrub. Looked great. Looked great. And I probably should close off some windows, but um, and you can't see it because it's all black. <laughs> but uh, there you can. I forgot I had a setting, and I just did it quick, where I went up 160 millimeters, and I went from the 0.5 at a point two <laughs> and as you can see it's very flat it almost looks like carbon fiber and then it gets all shiny because it went from 0.5 layer height to point two layer height big difference actually, I actually like the point five it's pretty cool and this one which started out all screwy see here on the bottom and I kind of left it because I didn't see in areas it was clear and the actual hearts came out great and it almost looks like this is now this is polyalchemy elixir and this looks much it, it doesn't look like this normal shiny polyalchemy it, it looks like brushed aluminum it looks really cool I know this picture isn't great because I got so much light in the background and the camera's over compensating. There you go. It looks like brushed aluminum. But again, it's doing weird, weird stuff right at the bottom. And then it did it on top, too. You can see right there. And only in, and it's weird because it's not, you'd think it would be where the overhang increased. It's actually the least overhang. And it's not over extrusion, it's actually the nozzle is not in the right spot. Because it does the exact opposite on the inside. It's not like it's not like it's swelling out and coming in. It's actually going like this. But it only does it in certain areas and it's weird. It's just very, very weird. And I think it's just something to do with uh Base mode, which is these are at the one point. I can't even crush this. It's freaking solid. Because I did this afterwards in normal mode with the one point nozzle. And it came out fine. I wouldn't call it perfect. Definitely need some fixes. But it Put one nozzle. Okay, come on. There's some issues up here. The one's sort of the same thing, but nowhere near as bad. And it's just a basic DVD, which I just ran real quick just to see if it was something with the printer or not. So there's that. I'm really not sure what, what the hell was going on. Hey, Mr. Buttram. Can you make an insert for the three millimeter? Uh, probably, but it's more of a butt issue than it's. Yeah, I don't know, Techie Dad. It might be, but come on, that's polyalchemy. The, the likelihood of that is very unlikely. I mean, I'm not going to say it, it couldn't happen because it can. I mean, even polyalchemy is, you know, it's still a company, they still can make mistakes. 
Yes, I'm adding ginger ale to juice. I find juice too thick. Especially this. This is not my favorite. This was a mistake. Makes it more refreshing. It's like some kind of mango y something. I thought it was um, pineapple orange and it's mango peach something, which is good. I mean, it's all right. But I find most juices too kind of thick. <clears throat> so I either water them down or sometimes I'll add ginger ale or. 7 up or something like that to make them more a little thinner and more refreshing to me, I find. So, I don't know what's going on with that nozzle, but I think today or later on, I will be putting this 8 millimeter one on. And I have a feeling this is the one that's going to go permanently on this machine. I've had a 0.6 on there. And with the Fun King, the Fun King's actually more accurate now. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> the Fun King is actually functioning really well. This came with the Fun King. Frown King, I should call it. I keep calling it the Fun King. It's the Frown King. The Frown King. Yeah, but uh, you know, I thought of the diameter and the speed, but it's it's not even a because it's it's um where it's base mode. The temperature it's literally misaligned in the head. The head's in the wrong spot. It's not like it's expanding or contracting or doing anything weird like that. My first thought was the two worst ones are polyalchemy. And this one, I have a feel. I know, I kind of know what was going on here, where it's so thick. I don't know if you ever used polyalchemy. Um, it, uh, when it comes out of the extruder, it like comes out and then it shrinks back up. And that's kind of what was happening on these corners, where it's so thick, it was doing it extremely. But the funny thing is, is it doesn't do it here where the actual imprint of the bunny is. Now, this is kind of a thicker corner. And I, I don't know. The next thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and see if it's something to do with that printer where that's the Duet Wi-Fi and everything. I've had weird issues with the Duet. Just not because there's anything wrong with the Duet, but because I sliced basically for Marlin. And it's got weird different codes to it sometimes. But this one came out fine up until here, which has started doing the same thing. I don't know if you can even see that in the dark or it's black. Um, and then it went to the two millimeter and it did the 2.2 just fine. There's a couple of little issues, but that's all minor. But I mean, the bottom half of this is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is what I was hoping for out of the point, the 1.0 nozzle, and stuff like this, because this thing's hard as a rock. Now, this is, I want to want to say cheap filament. It's not expensive, it's not cheap, um, it's local. This is filaments.us, or there's two of them, and that's what. Um, what was this? Oh, uh, monofilaments direct. There's U.S. monofilaments, which is in Vermont. And I don't know if you guys heard the story. I think I told the story before when I first got it. Uh, everyone got the U.S. monofilaments in one of the maker boxes or alien boxes or something like that. And they're in Vermont. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll order some. So I did a U.S. monofilament search. Well, the first thing that comes up when you do a Google search is um, monofilaments direct, which makes filament also. But they're in Massachusetts. It's a different company. And I ordered it, and it like two, three weeks later, I never even heard from them. 
So I said, cancel my order. And I was dropping it. Thank God I use PayPal. Call up PayPal or, you know, email PayPal and said, you know, cancel the order. I never got it. And oh, like a week later, the guy's like, oh, because it was right around Christmas. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just a small company. It's me and a friend of mine. And, hey, what's up? You do it. And uh, he was like, we were on Christmas vacation. And then I had a family member get ill. And, you know, sorry, no excuses. I ran a company. Not your fault. He's like, I'll cancel the order if you want. I'll let it go through. Or if you want the film it still, I'll ship it to you and I'll send you a 20% discount code for your next order. So you know what? I ordered it. It's not, it's like 22 bucks shipped, which is not bad. I like local companies. The guy did get in contact. He was very, you know, appeasable. He was more than willing to cancel it if I wanted to. So I, I got to film it. And I got to say, at first, I wasn't happy with it more because I had an attitude toward it. But the more I print with it, it's really low temperature PLA. What I mean is I normally burn PLAs at like 205, 210 on the average when I print with any of my printers are all about the same. And this stuff, I've gotten it all the way down to like 200. When I print at 205 or 210, it's too hot. You can just tell. It's just, it gets too liquidy. But it prints really smooth. Again, you probably can't see it because of the bright lights behind me because the windows are all open and it's super sunny out. But it prints really good. And for medium cheap Filament I and H2. What is that? Is it some kind of saying hi <laughs> that I never heard of? Anyways, it prints really nice. It's a low temperature, quick printing. Um, pretty nice mold, you know, as long as you learn to put it at the minute I, you know, lowered the temperature, I was getting kind of crappy prints at a high temperature, but it was obvious high temperature issues. You know, it's getting droopy and crappy and I did a uh, temp tower and at like 200, it prints super awesome. Now again, it's, it's not cheap filament. It's not Amazon $15 roll filament. I think it was $22 or $25 ship. Which is pricey-ish for PLA, especially basic PLA. But I like to tell them. So I may order more. They don't have a whole lot of colors. What they do do a lot of is sell bulk. Get the impression they sell to bulk a lot. That's their main thing. Is they sell to schools, I think, or something. And large, you know, ten kilo rolls, not one kilo rolls or two kilo rolls or two point two pounds, one kilo, whatever it is. I think they do. This is on their website. They show more large spools. They only have like six colors, but I think I'll order basic black and white from them and see what order another roll of black from almost out. And white. Because actually, I've been using Mindsmith. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Uh, Mindsmith filament off of Amazon for my whites. And you can't get it anymore. And then actually, that's another one that was cheap. I was the first time I ordered it was by accident. I thought it was uh, their label almost matches. Um, 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 yeah, the big Amazon brand that was big. They have a very similar metric. That's what I'm printing with right now. Is that stuff? Um, you can see the label. Uh, what the hell's the brand I'm thinking of? Oh my god. Um, um, um. Hatchbox. The label looks like Hatchbox. It was one of those, you know, two o'clock in the morning, I need more filament deals, so I just ordered it, and I'm extremely happy with it, actually, the Mindsmith stuff. And it was like five dollars cheaper than the Hatchbox. It's nice stuff. Actually, for, you know, again, it's a cheapo. I think it was that was 18 bucks a roll or something. And it's better than the inland. I tried the inland and I didn't like it as well. That prints much nicer and smoother and easier. So anyways, after that gets done printing, I will be installing at least one of these, maybe two. Probably just the one. Um, 
whatever they are, 5488s or whatever they are for the extruder. Because that extruder keeps under extruding while they're clicking all the time for no apparent reason. I'm surprised it hasn't done it. It doesn't hurt anything. I've never seen a, an issue with the actual print, but it just does it in the middle of the print for no reason. And it makes noise. So, it's obviously. And it's done it with every, just about every single film that I've run through it. So, that's going on there. And then this will probably go on that. And that's all my play money for the month. <laughs> I think it was 40 bucks for all this stuff. If that, I don't think it was that much. But I gotta figure this out. I'm beginning to wonder if it's just the polyalchemy. I gotta do this vase again with the cheapo black or white or something. And see if it's just this the polyalchemy film. It doesn't. Like it. I don't know. Like I said, it, it polyalchemy does that weird, like contracting, wormy thing. So I have a feeling it's just too thick for polyalchemy. But it's still weird that it's so perfect in the middle and only on the corners and the straightest part of the arcs. I just don't get it. And I can't, I don't know. Something ain't right. And we did it here on the bottom, and here in certain spots of the neck, other spots it's fine. Like right here, it's fine. But here it's not. And it's fine all along the middle. I, I just don't know. And I've looked at the actual, you know, slicing profiles and all of that, and I don't see an issue. In either slicer, again, this is Idea Maker. Um, this is actually Idea Maker 3.4, the new one. This is Cura 4.0. This was Idea Maker 3.4, and it's fine. Other than you know, that's a a change between the two layer heights, which was an oops on my part. The other problem with that one point nozzle is uh uses a lot of filament. Wow. You don't realize just how much that I mean you're going one and a half times wider than a point four. So yeah, you're gonna use almost twice as much, but it's it's amazing how much faster you go through a roll where that's polyalchemy. I'm like, wow, that chewed up like half a roll. <laughs> You know, that weird mango juice is not bad with those ginger ale mixed in. So anyways, there's that. What are you guys up to today? I think fun and exciting. I gotta find a place where I can put the Max Micron up and get it back running. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. It. It's just sitting on the floor over there. I don't like running it on the floor. I want it up on the shelf. But the uh, Prone King over here is taking up all that table. So I'm thinking about taking that box and remounting it somewhere, like up behind it, so I can put the Max Micron right next to it. I almost install this now. I'm just not in the mood to do anything like that. Right now, I'm printing another light base. I'm not sure, but you guys probably saw my little light clips from this morning. If I can hang on to them. But there's a new addition. That is really new. It's a older, but I'm still working on it. Where they make a drop light, basically, out of them. By putting this on there. Now, I have found one issue. Is it made a little snug. And I went to pull the light bulb out of this thing, and it pulled the whole end cap off. Stuck in there too well. 
But basically, I made a little tripod that you can stick your light into. You have one of these bar LEDs. And it makes it kind of like a drop light or a stand light or a studio light, whatever you want. And right now I'm making one. That's the only problem with these um, bar lights that I made. Um, there's like a hundred different brands on Amazon and eBay, and they all have a slightly different end profile. So if you were to make any of these or even those these clips, you'll have to modify them to fit your particular brand. These lights are wicked awesome. They come with a little like six inch daisy chain cables. So you could take one of these and you plug another cable into the end. You can put the power cable on either end. Anything on either end. They're stupidly simple. They take a beating. As you can see, this one's actually already been dented. I've used this uh, drop light out in the garage. That's actually what this is for. So I can just use it as a standing drop light. And you stick it in there and run a cord to it. They will come with their cord and a switch. Hey, red light. So I'm designing these cool little tripod stands. I think for this four foot, this is working. I think I'm going to design longer legs. But the legs just snap in. So I can make a slightly longer leg. Because this is, it holds and it's not terrible. But it's kind of, I mean, these things don't weigh anything. So... But they're still, this one, I mean, four foot in the air on this little tripod is a little much. So I'm making another base right now. That's just printing on the front crown king. Another base that I can use these legs on for the two foot bulb. And then I will print, I'll probably add an inch or two each one of these legs for this one. But the way this is designed now, I designed this so even people with uh, um, the little printers like the uh, Monoprice Minis and all of that can print these. And these are all off the Frown King, just so you know. I mean, the quality coming off of that Frown King is just amazing now. That uh... Oh, I got to get the blue tape off the bottom of there. I forgot all about that. Um... <laughs> That Gen L board is just really happy with it. The only thing I'm not super duper happy with is the temperature wave. So it definitely has a temperature wave issue. But for this kind of stuff, my only concern is I've, I've been thinking about You saw it. Actually, his wife says, <laughs> that's funny. It took me a second to get there. Um, where was I? Oh, the front king. Um, it's running really well. I'm, like, surprised how the quality come off of that thing now. I mean, I did a lot of work on it, and it's reasonably quiet. The only thing I got to say is, I don't know if you can hear it, but... Um, What's up, light speed? Um, uh, where am I? Oh, the frown key. The, ever since I did the linear advance to it, when it's doing like straight lines or longer straight lines, it makes this weird grindy sound. And it's not, it's not even a grindy, I shouldn't call it a grinding sound because it doesn't sound like it's, like it's grinding. It sounds almost like it's, it almost sounds like a file. That makes sense. It's just, it's not, it's not a bad sound. It doesn't sound like there's anything wrong or that it's stressing or anything. It's just a different sound I've ever heard a 3D printer make. 
and it's just I mean, you can hear it. It ramps up and ramps down real fast and makes this weird sound during the ramp, you know, that arc. When it's moving slow in the beginning, when it's moving slow at the end, it doesn't make... But that that in-between high-speed sound as it ramps up, it's just weird. It only does it on really long areas. But it's only done it since the linear advance, too, which is kind of funny. i got to get that flute from the bottom of that. Even though it's the bottom, I don't care. It drives me nuts. You know, I may not be able to because I don't think I have enough paper towel right here. Yeah, sure we can. Little rubbing it all. Put it on there. Yeah, I mean. And you probably can't see these because of the lighting in the room because it's so bright out. But the Frown King is printing phenomenally. Like it really is. I wouldn't say perfect, but it's doing way better than. What about the drivers? Oh, the noise? No, it's it's not that kind of sound. It's not like that normal grady. I mean, I'm sure it is. It's the drivers ramping up and ramping down, or the the motors ramping up and ramping down with the drivers, but. I mean, it's still way quieter than, than it would be if I had all of these things on there. <laughs> these 4988s or whatever the hell these things are called. The cheapos. But ever since that linear advance, it's just like a weird... I, I don't even know how to describe it. I'll, I'll have to set a mic next to it when I know it's going to do it. So you can hear it and record it sometime. I mean, again, it's it's not bad it's just one of those you hear it and you're like you don't go like oh my god what's wrong you go what the hell <laughs> it's more like uh the reaction if you heard a cat bark like a dog if that makes sense it's more of a surprising sound than a, it doesn't sound like anything's wrong it's just weird you don't expect it coming from it And we take the blue tape off. I don't know if I'll get it off because I actually set the nozzle way too low on this particular one. Well, a lot of it's coming off. Not all of it, but most of it. I'm not even rubbing hard. A little rubbing alcohol takes blue tape right off. Breaks it right down. I'm actually surprised it's getting it out. It's going to be a few notches. It doesn't because I have a feeling it's literally inside the print. That was way too low. When I printed this. Hmm, looks like I get 99.9% .9 of it out. That's really amazing. I watch people and they're always like, oh, you got to scrape the blue tape off the bottom and it's such a pain in the butt. And no, you really don't have to scrape the blue tape. I'm not even pushing on this. I'm just rubbing the rubbing alcohol soaked rag over it. After letting it soak for a minute. There you go. Clean. Clean and clear of blue tape. A few blue spots right here, which again, I don't that way too well. So they might literally be impregnated into the print. Little water or rubbing on oh, takes blue tape right off the bottom of the print. When there's nothing but blue tape for that, because I'll never get it hot enough to use anything else. It won't get to 70. <laughs> Which is, I was thinking about using a PEI sheet and magnets with that. With the bed on that thing, is just horrendously, terribly low powered. And it's definitely the bed, it's not the, uh, because the power supply is the same as this one. It's exactly the same size, weight, everything. And actually, it's my old Max Micron power supply, which is 
awesome. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but one thing about that Max Micron is it had a really good power supply on it. For a cheap oh, high powered, I should say. Not necessarily good, but it was high powered. That's why I put it in there in the right direction, huh? There you go. Another white tripod. Hold up LED lights so you can make them into like drop lights. Blue tape stays on your bed. I normally don't. I can usually peel it right off. Prints come right off the blue tape, especially like on a magnet sheet. If I have it on there with the you know, the flex sheet, I can get the blue tape. I can reuse the blue tape 15, 20 times on the average. Depending on the size. If I do a really, really large, flat print, it almost always is going to tear the blue tape at some seam. And that's because it goes over the seam and, you know, you're pulling it up and it pulls on the seam just enough and pulls the tape up. But generally, I can reuse blue tape 15, 20 times. But you do have to be, you have to get the height just right. But once you do, once you get it set, it also depends on the film. Like my HDPLA is the, the, the Maker Geeks, which I still have some of. Uh -huh. I haven't heard through all that crap. Um, Protopastas, all the HDPLAs, they stick to the blue tape like freaking like hell. <laughs> they do not let go. This thing came out really good, actually. Surprised this actually works. <laughs> and it stands up and everything. I expect it to be more tippy than it is. So anyway, somebody want to jump in here? You know, I don't really think if anyone wants to pop in for any particular reason. I got two little notifications. 3D print creator. Oh, wow, what a price difference. With the Netherlands, here we can buy them at the action kind of a dollar store for 350 euros each two foot version or 548. Screw you, 3D printer creator. No, that's cool. <laughs> it's about time Europe started getting stuff cheaper than us. One thing about the US is almost everything here in the US is usually cheaper than anywhere else, but it's good if you can get them over there in the Netherlands cheaper. It's about time. <clears throat> so isn't the Netherlands one of those countries that subsidizes like energy saving crap like light bulbs you know if you go to LEDs or something like that they, they give you a wicked discount the actual country helps pay for it just like uh, here when um, when uh, the incandescents first started going out um CLMP, which no longer exists, Connecticut Light and Power, is now Eversource. But they originally had a savings. If you went at a Home Depot, Lowe's, or anything like that, and you'd take a little ticket you got in the mail, they'd give you 50% off any light energy saving light bulb. Or so if you were buying incandescent replacements, you know, that were LED, looks like a regular everyday screwing light bulb. But they were either LED or fluorescent. If you bought one of those, you got a 50% discount with that coupon up to like $20 off. 
So you go around and replace all your light bulbs with LEDs or incandescents for half the price. I got a bunch from my garage. I got the, I put the can lights, excess lighting in. It was the same thing. They were like $30 back then. They're only they're nothing now, but they're like six bucks now. But the replacement inset, LED inset with the whole trimmering and everything, were like $30. I bought six or eight of them, I think, for 15 bucks a piece, which was a good savings then. Now they're half that price. Actually, I may replace them again because I got the warm white. I really like the bright white over the warm white. I don't like that yellowy tinge to them. Anyway. So there's that. Can I put this in now? I almost want to, but I cornered it don't. Can't main lappy CPU fan failing. Is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, you can get them in different color temperatures now. I prefer LEDs. They're just for one thing that the prices actually come down reasonably. They're cheaper than just about anything else. Um, regular incandescents are fine, other than they're power hungry and they're constantly replacing them. But uh, and they're hot as hell. Um, I hate fluorescents. I always have ever since I was a kid. Couldn't stand them in the schools. I don't know what it is, but my eyes actually see the flicker of, a, of an LED. If I'm in a room with LEDs for more than like an hour, I mean a fluorescent for more than like an hour, I get a massive headache because it just, I can see the flicker in a, fl in a fluorescent. It's like flashing to me. CPU fan failing? That yeah, sucks. Time for a new CPU fan. Then a laptop that makes it a pain in the butt to get to, but it's still doable. If the laptop's worth saving. <laughs> I don't do laptops anymore. I had a couple. I got just I'm done with laptops. They're too underpowered. They're too pain in the butt. They're too claustrophobic for me. Just too tight and small and annoying. Tight and small and annoying. Yeah, you're allowed to be tired. Everyone's tired once in a while. I'm now live on my YouTube channel. Well, no, really? I did not know that. Borderlands 3 is officially official. Man, I am so not happy right now. I so want this. Oh, not until September 13th. Oh, yeah, time. Got plenty of time. I don't know if you guys ever played Borderlands. It's weird. I used to be a big fanatic as a kid of video games. I loved video games when I was a kid. But, uh, kind of outgrown, you know. But I've had Xboxes and Playstations. When I go by spells, I'll play like crazy for like a month. And then I won't even turn a thing on for six months. But Borderlands, the original, was, I still say, is by and far the best one. Borderlands 2 was mechanically better. The actual, they changed some of the controls and made it more smart. Made it easier to play. Smarter. But uh, 
the original game was I still think is the best one of all of them. But even even the crappiest, the latest crappiest little prequel they call it, even that was fun. It wasn't as good. It's kind of depressing because you were expecting it to be as good as one or two. I mean, two was still great. One and two are awesome. They're they're almost tied. I prefer one, but they're very close. But Borderlands three wasn't all that. Borderlands the prequel wasn't all that great. They're coming out with Borderlands three, and I hope it's good. I hope they go back to the original because that and Burnout Revenge, the original like. Burnout Revenge 1 through 4. Burnout Revenge, or Burnout 1 through 4, and then Burnout Revenge was the bomb. But then they went to the, the newest Burnout, which didn't do so well because they tried to make it like all the other racing games and make it somewhat realistic. And the fun of Burnout was it was not realistic, <laughs> it was just ridiculously overkill, stupid. That's what made it fun. And they destroyed it by trying to make it, you know, realistic, whatever engines to make the driving more realistic. And they just killed it. It just got stupid. Just like every other racing game then. Is anybody doing anything fun today? It's Thursday. How oh, the time flies. Oh, he's got massive chest pain. Maybe I'm having a heart attack. That was bizarre. Wow, that hurt. Okay, it's gone. So anyway... time is it? 12.30? I've been going almost an hour. Right? 56 minutes ago, it says. So I'm going to probably kill it right at once. My performance analysis evaluation. Who are you evaluating? Yourself? I did awesome performance. Dude, let me do it for you. Mr. Buttram is awesome. He's got a butt and a ram. So he's butt ram. And it's awesome. His ability to take a joke is awesome. <laughs> Performance evaluation. Those things are always so stupid to me. Never got all that crap. I did that when the, the company I worked for that big company for a while. It was great when we were big but small. It was kind of funny because we were a huge company, but there was actually only seven employees. We had like 35 jobs that we were working on job sites. We were doing great and making millions. There was literally only seven of us actually employed by the company. We hired all subcontractors to do the actual work. We were just, you know, paper pushers mostly. You know, I'd go around and check off things were done and make sure they got done and got materials for the guys. And, you know, I had two or three hundred guys underneath me doing the jobs at three or four different sites. And just drive from site to site to site. I'd start at four in the morning, I'd show up on a job site and walk through the buildings, and make sure this, this, and this was done and this, this, and this was ready. If it wasn't, I'd go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever was local hardware store, get whatever they needed. So when they showed up, I had a list, they were ready to go, move on to the next job site. I literally started at 4 in the morning and be done it. And it was all, I loved it. It was my kind of work. Done at noon. Think about it. Yeah, I started at 4, but I was done at noon. I was out mountain biking and hiking and by lunch. CNC Read Alert. Never even heard of it. That doesn't even sound like a game. Shop out apart. 
Well, you have fun with that. Yeah, I'm going to kill it anyways. It's 1230. Like, go make a sandwich or something for lunch. Actually, I don't want a sandwich. I'll probably do BLTs for dinner. I don't want to use sandwich, but I need to do a shape. I was going to rake leaves this morning. That's why I'm doing the live stream. I was going to go out and rake leaves. And I walked down to get the mail. And the wind is blowing, like, unbelievably hard. And I can deal with a little bit of wind. I'm actually picking the leaves up. I'm not raking them around or trying to blow them with a bar. I'm picking them up and carting them away. So the wind really doesn't hurt anything because you're just picking them up. You're not trying to move them. You're just picking them up and putting them in a the wheelbarrow or whatever. But uh, with this wind, I just couldn't even. I can imagine myself putting them in a the wheelbarrow and going to get the next, you know, shovel load. And by the time I go back to the wheelbarrow, the wheelbarrow will be empty and they'll be all blown across the yard. Now it takes a little longer to shut down. Yeah, it's time for a new fan there, Rowan. What the hell is CNC Read Alert? Or is that just you joking around that your fan's shutting your computer down? <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and wait for the answer. Uh, <laughs> oh, Red Alert. I think I remember Red Alert. It was another walk around first person kind of shooter one, wasn't it? I remember the original one of those. That's actually the original... Uh, um, they're all based on that game engine. What the hell's the name of the game now? It's like one of the, it isn't the first person shooter because the first person shooter ever made, let me rephrase that. The first person network shooter, which was a networkable, it was actually Marathon, which I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember Marathon. That was the first networkable first person shooter. Um, First, the first first person shooter, I think, was Duke Nukem. I don't remember if Marathon came out before Duke Nukem or after. I think just after. But Marathon was the first networkable one. But then, uh, um, so in all the, the game engine, you always hear the game engine based on the game engine. Uh huh. Oh, God, it was a first-person shooter. But anyways, it's the first reason I got this stupid thing. Because you could set it up where I could um, spin the, the mouse ball here. This is a trackball. And uh, I could push the button. I'd set it up at super fast fire rate because you could adjust the buttons and fire rates and everything back then. And uh, you just spin the, the, the trackball push the button down and my little dude would go around really fast and just you, you get like a gatling gun that would just shoot out and just kill everybody <laughs> would just wipe them all out they're like you're cheating i'm like well sort of you could all do it too with a trackball you can use a trackball which they stopped allowing that um that was the name of the game though that was one of the first person shooters i really really got into too I can see the stupid thing that says, because all of them are now are based on that game engine. Um, like even the, the Call of Duty, isn't anything that's a first person shooter in today's current game, pretty much all of them use that game engine to you know drive the mechanics of the game. And now I can't remember the name of it. Um, Arena. Uh, okay, now I'm going to kill myself trying to think of it. I'm 
have to search it up. Uh, list of game engines. Um, Alpha One. Work. Work. Oh, come on. Word. I didn't know Word had its own game engine. Right in here. What was it? R. God, what the hell was the name of that? No, it's killing me. Unreal, that's it. Damn it. Now that I remember. Unreal Game Engine. Wolfenstein's based on Unreal. The new ones are. The original one wasn't. Yeah, Unreal Game Engine. That's the one I was thinking of. Unreal. The original Unreal tournaments. That's why I got uh, that's why I originally got my first trackball. I'm not kidding you. It was for Unreal. Because I could you could set it, push the button, and just spin the the <clears throat> ball. And your guy would spin around super fast and just throw out a spray of bullets. You need a gun, like a Gatling gun or something that was belt fed or had a large magazine. You could just like, go out in the middle of the thing, get a big guy who was dumb and stupid but could take a lot of hits. So I could stand in the middle of the arena while people are shooting at me and just freaking fire away. They were all like shooting rocket launchers and crap at me, and I just wipe them all out. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Back in the day, that was a long time ago. Yeah, Unreal. Yep, the original Unreal. Yes, I'm old. Put it this way, I was a teenager when Pong came out. Think about it. <laughs> was a teenager already. Which is funny, because you look at me, I do not, I'm sorry, I don't look as old as, like, Walter. Or Mike. Oily. They look older than me. And they're almost 10 years younger than I am. They definitely look older than me. So that gray hair over there. I'm just starting to go gray. I let my hair grow. I'll start showing gray tips. My beard's turned gray too. Starting to. I got shaved. Getting all scruffy. Very, very scruffy. Anyway, what am I doing? I'm going to kill this. This is yakking now. All right, I'm out. Later, guys. Thanks for stopping by. We were just talking about you, Mike, and you popped in. Talking about how old and raggedy you look. <laughs> I was just killing the stream, too. And Mike freaking pops in. What's up, Riley? You're 61, so you got me beat by a good five or six years. Well, then, I now? What year is this? 2019. Oh, I am 54. Just think about it. Anyway, I'm killing it. Hi, Riley. Bye, Riley. We were just making a fun of you. Or I was making fun of you. So I'm killing it. Um, I gotta find out which window it's in. All right, later, guys.